Well, we're going to, if you don't mind, just open up your Bibles to wherever the Holy Spirit shows you, because these are prophetic meetings, all right? Psalms chapter 85. Psalms chapter 85. I want to read this as a, as a declaration over your life, but I want to also read this as a declaration over this region. And I'm going to share several things that the Lord spoke to me um, or earlier today and really over this last week about this region. I believe that we're here at a very critical time. I believe that this is a very important season. It's not just that this happens to be the time that these meetings were scheduled, but when I share what I share, what I'm going to share, you're going to understand that we're here for such a time as this. But I want to start out by decreeing this, Psalms chapter 85, uh, over the land. It says, Lord, you've been favorable to your land. You've brought back the captivity of Jacob. You've forgiven the iniquity of your people. How many are glad that God's forgiven your iniquity? You have covered all their sins, Selah. You have taken away all your wrath. You've turned from the fierceness of your anger. Verse 4, restore us, O God of our salvation. That means turn us around. How many believe this land could use a turnaround? Turn us around, O God of our salvation, and cause your anger towards us to cease. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Verse 6, will you not revive us again? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. That word revive is the Hebrew word chaya. Can you just say chaya? Chaya. Uh, sounds high. Okay. <laughs> this is what it means. It means to restore to life or health. To keep alive. Come on, if you need to be revived, lift your hands up. To restore to life or health, to keep alive, to nourish, to preserve, to quicken, to recover, to repair, to be made whole, to live prosperously, to bring out of sickness, out of discouragement, out of weakness, to bring out of death. Come on. How many believe that God wants to do that for you, but he also wants to do that for this region and for the land that you live in? Amen. Verse 8 David writes this, and he, uh, and he says this. He, Solomon writes this. He says, I will hear what the Lord God will speak. I will hear what the Lord God will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. Wave your hand at me if you're a saint. Y'all know that you don't have to die and get in a stained glass window to be a saint, right? Okay. He speaks peace to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. I want to just point out this phrase, speak peace, is the Hebrew phrase, Dabar Shalom. Say this with me, Dabar Shalom. We'll come back to that in just a minute. So we're going to hear what the Lord speaks, and then he's going to Dabar Shalom. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. I want you to just, just put your hand on your own heart and say that glory may dwell in my land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth shall spring out of the earth and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land, this region, shall yield its increase. I want you to say, my land shall yield its increase. Say, this land shall yield its increase. Righteousness will go before you and make his footsteps your pathway. A decree over this region. A decree over the land of this region. This scripture is very important to me. Number one, when it says, I will hear what the Lord God will speak, the word hear is the word shama. Say shama. The word shama is very interesting. It has a lot of different meanings in, uh, in the Hebrew, but it has this very interesting connotation. It means to listen intentionally and to hear intelligently. Do you need a strategy in your life? Do you need a strategy for breakthrough? Is there something you've been praying about? <laughs> I, I was, I, this scripture is so important to me because um, uh, we have seven grandchildren, seven awesome, amazing, phenomenal grandchildren. And, uh, and our fifth grandchild was born with a condition called Williams syndrome, which is a genetic deletion. 
So when he was born, he had a lot of problems. He cried a lot. Um, he didn't seem to develop the way that our other babies had developed. And when he was about five months old, it was just seeming to get worse. He, um, he hadn't really progressed beyond just what a week old baby would do. He, he did not um, roll over by five months. He did not make eye contact by five months. He did not smile at mommy and daddy by five months. He did nothing but pretty much cry. Okay, so we knew something was was wrong. Doctors were starting to do tests, and I was actually down in Trinidad, and uh, take I had an afternoon off, and I was walking the floor and just crying out to God. And you know, we we cry out to God. We we use a lot of words. We use a lot of emotion. We use a lot. Of, and then I just kind of heard the Lord say, "Shh." How many know? Sometimes our answer is in "shh." <laughs> And I said, God, what is it? What is a strategy of how to pray for Lucas? And that's when the Lord gave me the scripture, Psalms 85, verse 8. I will hear, I will shama what the Lord is saying. I will listen intentionally, and I will hear intelligibly what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, because God wants to speak peace, debar shalom over Lucas's life. Now, the word debar literally means to make a decree with authority. How many understand that Jesus never really prayed for anybody to be healed? You know that, right? He never really prayed for anybody. He just made decrees. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Woman, stretch out your hand. Woman, thou art loosed. You know, Lazarus, come forth. I mean, right before that he prayed, he goes, Father, I'm praying here today so that everybody around me knows that you and I are connected. And then he stopped praying and he said, Lazarus, come forth. Okay, so we've got to learn how to shift out of just a praying petitioning. That's important too, but we've got to lift, learn to shift out of just praying and crying out into a position of hearing from heaven and then decreeing what God says. To debar shalom. What is the word shalom? We all know it's the word peace, right? So it actually means wholeness. That's right. Wholeness, completeness. It actually means prosperity. It means to have favor. It literally has this connotation, nothing missing, nothing damaged, nothing broken. And the Lord gave me that scripture to pray or to decree over Lucas. And I felt like the Lord said, go home and debar shalom over Lucas. Now, Lucas's condition wasn't diagnosed yet, so we didn't really know what was going on. Um, and he actually is, has genes, has deleted genes. In other words, he has 26 genes that did not form on his DNA strand. And God said, decree, nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing damaged. Okay? So when we went home, we brought him up in front of our church, and we, I explained the story, and I said, we're going to debar shalom over Lucas. And do you know that little Lucas at five months old, he screamed all the way through my anointed decree. <laughs> In front of God and everybody, okay? And finally, I was done. I was kind of like, okay, take him, take him, you know. <laughs> but he screamed the whole time. But that day, all the kids came to the house for lunch. After church on Sunday, all the kids come over to our house for lunch. I'm not really sure why I don't cook. I know how to order, okay? I used to get really condemned about that when I would read Proverbs 31 where it talks about how the Proverbs 31 woman gets up before the sun to cook for her family. And I was like, yeah, that's not happening, okay? And I would say, I love to honor my husband as the priest of our home. I'm always offering up burnt sacrifices to him, okay? It's just really not my gift. But one day when I was reading in Proverbs 31 and it says this, some of y'all are going to love this revelation. You won't remember anything else I say tonight, but you remember this, okay? It says, she brings her food from afar. <laughs> y'all, that's takeout, okay? That is takeout, okay? Some of y'all just got set free, okay? So, so we were waiting for, for delivery, okay? We were waiting for, not deliverance, but for delivery, and... And they had brought little Lucas over, and she put Lucas down on the floor. And for the first time that we can remember in his little five months, he didn't just start screaming his head off. So the whole family kind of went, what? What's happening? And as we watched, Lucas rolled over. And his mommy ran over and picked him up, 
And she picked him up like this, and he made direct eye contact with her and gave her a giant smile. Amen? Now, we've still had to continue to pray and decree, but understand this. When we start decreeing what God wants to speak, what God wants to say, literally it begins to cause things to shift in your life. Amen? Some of you need to go home and speak to Bar Shalom over your family, to Bar Shalom over your, over your home, over your workplace, over, over your health, whatever it is. I believe that there's a decree that God wants to bring out of your mouth that begins to cause a shift both in the spirit, but not just shift in the spirit, but shift things in the natural as well. Amen? Jesus taught us about decreeing. Remember he said, if you say to this mountain, remember? If you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and do not doubt in your heart, what? It shall obey you. So Jesus taught us about the power of the decree. Job twenty two twenty eight says, you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established for you, so light will shine on your way. Anybody here need some light to shine on your way? Do you need light to shine on this region? Okay, then we need to be making decrees because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Who you shall decree it. Who shall decree it? You shall decree it. 